favorite farmers. I welcome you to our channel again. My name is Segue Hamis as usual from Kimdi Group of Companies, the design team. We are bringing you a 100 zero grazing goat structure that has been constructed in Kalule. And I want to take you through what it has and maybe remind you of those few things that make it sound and functional. What makes our structure functional is basically three things, starting with the functionality itself, whereby you have to provide the spaces for the animals to make them comfortable, whether they are in the structure or outside the structure. Then two, sound material, whereby you're going to put a lot of money setting up this structure, right? Whichever structure it is. So you want to have value for that money. But what brings back that value is this structure staying for a long period of time without needing to be maintained. Then third, how does this structure serve its purpose without affecting the animals in it? The structure being bring about health hazards, things like that. That is a different one from the first point I mentioned, providing spaces. Providing spaces is one, but then two, this structure must be functional in a way that it allows the animals to stay in here without causing them problems. For example, you may find that your structure, when the animals are walking in, their feet get stuck, so they frequently get fractures, they get accidents. Then you find that sometimes your structure doesn't allow ease of cleaning, doesn't have a level of self-cleaning, or it doesn't allow good aeration, or things like that, that make the animals sick while they are staying in it. Let's start with the part of functionality in terms of spaces. This structure here being a small size, we do not put a lot of spaces in it, but we put the major ones we feel like those are necessary to have in our setup. Generally, we need the structure itself, and being that we are on zero grazing, we need a containment space, or what we call an exercise yard, whereby our animals get their exercise, but then they are not confined into the structure. Under the shelter, there are also some spaces we need to have in there. So in our structure itself, we provide three major spaces. One is the box isolation space, two, the general flock space, and then the mother's space. This is our mother's space, whereby the pregnant animals are isolated from the general flock. A goat gives birth, we put it inside this smaller room, and it's key. Why do we do that? You find that even when goats are pregnant, they are still aggressive a little bit. It's not a good truck to keep the pregnant animals together with those that have given birth. The kids in their first week, they are delicate. If you put them together, you increase the chances of these animals being trampled on. They are going to be stepped on. So we put it in that separate space so that it's together with its kid, making sure the kid is safe itself. But then it's also the mother is accessible by the kid. And we can add like a polythene covering that wraps around the kid section. That way, when the kids are born and they're in there, they are protected from extreme weather. The other part I talked about of functionality is ability for the structures to serve without endangering the animals. You provide a level of self-cleaning in these structures. We have troughs, as I always say, that allow animals to feed while they are inside a structure. We put it outside to maximize the internal space and limit the amount of space we have to provide for 100 goats. You should also remember to keep this feeder at a height that is comfortable in that the animal doesn't have to bend too low to eat. Our floor is made of 6 by 2 timber and we usually leave a bit of space between these, these boards to allow for poop dropped by goat to escape through this and go down on our slab base. Because when the urine goes through with a little heat, this wood is going to dry up. But if you have a structure that is all packed up and the droppings don't get to leave, one, it increases necessity of cleaning every day. These things sometimes are taken for granted. Things like access doors, they should be easy to work with. You know, when it locks, when it opens, these doors should be light enough for an animal to literally push it itself as it's walking in and from this is our general flock space where i'm standing right now and what you see here this smaller space is the box isolation space in case you need the box to be removed from the general flock and put in their own section this is our ramp which is used to access the structure the ramp first of all we put it at a height whereby it's not going to be too steep but then as well we cover our ramp with our roof the ramp has to have extra buttons over the ramp itself on rainy days we find that driving wind winds are likely to make this space wait so if you don't have these extra buttons you find that animals are going to or even yourself as you try to access the structure you're going to keep sliding we have this guardrail from the top of our ramp or this landing to the ground it's quite a height so you want to avoid accidents of animals just running off and jumping down or even yourself while you carry a lot of things or something you may accidentally fall over so that's why we add this guardrail we extend the roof so that rain doesn't fall directly onto our ramp our wood is of good girth but then it is not good enough just have big poles you need to protect them a bit extra so as you can see we have used tar to treat our hole to protect them from water penetration but also from termite attacks we also provide a concrete footing and it's not just here but it also goes down to the part that is buried in the ground actually the spot is protected from that water and then termites also that may be walking over the ground and are not in the ground can't affect these poles we have this chain link which stops the animal from going under the structure because remember we provide a flow in the structure in a way that allows droppings to go down and the whole essence is that we don't want our animals to interact with the droppings they drop. That is why we put this net that isolates the animal from where the droppings are 
collected. This is basically where our animals get to relax. This particular one hasn't yet been cleared of grass. We prefer to have all this grass cleared out. Animals that go free range grazing tend to have more attacks of pests and are likely to get more diseases connected to being in the field or even accidents themselves. Things like snake bite, insect attacks or things like that. So if you also have it inside the exercise yard, then you've not really eliminated the dangers associated with animals going free range grazing. So that's why we prefer this exercise yard to be cleared and that is going to be done even here. These are our outdoor feeding troughs. Wooden ones are usually smaller but are equally functional and we have still have these buttons as I explained earlier. They are for stopping animals from stepping in here. Animals just place their heads in here, pick out food. We also have this shed which is essentially to put shelter where the food is but also while the animals are here eating there is a level of shelter they don't have to be under sunshine while they are eating as you can see the whole exercise yard is enclosed off using chain link which chain link is tightly fixed and the sole reason for that is that animals are playful and sometimes you find that the materials you're going to use that are available on market or even those that are affordable the gate is not strong enough this partition i'm standing at right now is called the spray crush when time comes when you need to spray your animals which usually is advanced to be done at least once a week you contain a certain number of animals in here is where you spray them from and then they can come out these have been ant hills but they've been treated to kill the termites themselves we would not advise them to be dug out you know, if you're sure you're using the right treatment for the termites themselves and the termites are no longer there then you can leave this mound if it's not too high then you can have it left in the exercise yard because at the end of the day the goats like playing on these things and what's a bit of fun for the animal we have we also have trees in here we would wouldn't advise clearing them especially if it's a fruit tree like this that still has benefits but then we wouldn't advise to keep it thick. consider pruning it frequently in that it doesn't have to harbor snakes maybe that can affect the animals over time even the branches themselves when it's too thick those branches are likely to break and cause accidents in the structure this has been